Hello, welcome to this section of Mastering Statistics. Uh, in this section, we're going to, again, study our data set and try to find things to calculate, to characterize and describe our data. And if you have, uh, if you recall, in the previous few sections, we were trying to find a way to pick a number that described the center of our data set. And so we talked about the mean, which is the, you know, the average. Uh, we talked about uh, the median and we talked about the mode and those are just different ways of just trying to find that nice middle value. Most of the time we're going to be using the mean that we've done uh, and we learned about in the past in order to find what the middle of our data set is. Now this section is where we start to talk about measures of dispersion. You might see the word dispersion in your book. Um, think about the word dispersion. What does it mean? It means uh, to disperse, which means to spread out or to, to see how much something is spread. When you, when you find a measure of dispersion, which is what we're talking about in this section, we're trying to find a way to figure out how spread out or how dispersed our data is. So that's kind of some background info on what the word dispersion means in terms of statistics because I know you're going to read your book. It's going to talk about measures of dispersion. And a lot of students were like, what's that? It's just trying to figure out how spread out our data is. And so in this section, we're going to talk about finding the range of a data set and also the variance of a data set. And we'll get some practice calculating it, and then we'll have some other, uh, some other definitions in future sections to talk about it also. So we want to measure the spread of our data. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say we have a data set, uh, which is the age of people in a room. Right, so we go to a party or something, and we uh, we go and we ask everybody, "How how old are you? How old are you? How old are you?" And uh, we get the following data set: uh, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 17, 18, 19. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people in our birthday party or whatever it is, and. We have one 15-year-old, two 16-year-olds, three 17-year-olds, one 18-year-old, one 19-year-old. Let me ask you a question. Do you think this data is highly dispersed or do you think it's spread out? Um, and what I mean by that is when you look at the values there, do they look bunched up or do they look really spread out? Well, you know, at first glance you might say, well, they're kind of spread out. I mean, I have a 15-year-old and a 16-year-old and a 17-year-olds and 18 and 19, so that's kind of spread out. But what about the four-year-olds? What about the 39-year-olds? What about the 24-year-olds? I mean, I don't have any values significantly outside of that upper teenage range. I really don't. So to contrast this, let me uh, do the same experiment. So this is sort of like party number one. So let's say party one. Now let's look at party Number two, what would that data set look like if I just happened to, to do a comparison here? So again, I'm going to choose eight people at random. I get a four-year-old, a seven-year-old, a 12-year-old, 17, 20, 22, 24, and 28. All right. Which one of these data sets from party one or party two, notice I have eight different people in each one of them. Which one of these parties do you think is more spread out? Well, to me, it looks like number two is much more spread out because I have a much wider range of people that are attending that party. I have some kids. I have some very young preteens. I have a teenager. I have some early 20-year-olds, and I have some people in their upper 20s. So if I had to calculate the mean of party number two, it, I'm just eyeballing it. The mean is probably going to be somewhere around 20 years old or 19 years old. 